Joining us now are two men who have been unfairly targeted by investigators tangled up in that mess. Informal presidential advisor Roger Stone, author of the new book, Stone's Rules, How to Win at Politics, Business and Style, and filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza, whose new movie, Death of a Nation, Can We Save America a Second Time, comes out August 3rd. Looking forward to that. Both of you, it's great to have you both on tonight. So, uh, Dinesh, let's start with you. Uh, whether it's the New York State Attorney General's office going after the Trump Foundation that gave away $19 million with no overhead, no administrative costs, which a lot of wealthy people do. They set up their own private foundations and then donate the money from there. Whether that or the, uh, what we find out about the bias uh, of Peter Strzok and the merry band of prosecutors at the IG's, uh, from the IG's report, what's your takeaway tonight? What should the American people be thinking? I think the American people, uh, li like me, are uh, arriving at the uh, dismaying realization that in America today, there are quite a few criminals with badges. Uh, now, growing up as I did in India, uh, we had a lot of corruption, and we knew that there were criminals on the street, and there were criminals with badges. But, uh, and the criminals with badges are more dangerous, because they don't just violate the law, they corrupt the law. They, uh, they exploit the neutrality that you expect of them. Uh, they pervert the democratic process, as Peter Strzok tried to do, uh, by essentially rigging. I mean, think about this. This is unprecedented. The FBI attempting to, in a sense, shape the outcome of a democratic election. Um, so these are terrible things happening now in America. And um, I think the American people are, are realize that something needs to be done about them. Um, and it's not enough to know about them. Some action needs to be taken. But it's like you're operating in an alternative universe if you watch any of the other networks tonight. It's no big deal. Let's move on to Stormy Daniels. Roger, uh, I have to read part of this report. A lot of stuff not being covered at all, again, by other media outlets. This is um, a uh, quote from the report, November 9th, 2016, a text message from an FBI unidentified employee. This is the day after the election. All the people who were initially voting for her Mrs. Clinton, would not and were not swayed by the decision the FBI put out. In other words, I think the late, uh, the late Wiener uh, emails. Trump's supporters were all poor to middle class, uneducated, lazy POS that think he will magically grant them jobs for doing nothing. They probably didn't watch the debates, aren't fully educated on his policies, and are stupidly wrapped up in his unmerited enthusiasm. Has anything ever encapsulated, Roger, the elite's disdain for the American people? No, and I think when we get to the bottom of it, we're going to find out that, that at the end of the day, the Obama Justice Department, the Obama FBI, used the authority and the capability of the state and a bogus dossier to conduct surveillance uh, on the Republican candidate for president and to infiltrate his campaign with spies. So FBI Director Ray today says, well, we respect the congressional oversight, at the same time refusing to hand over any information regarding that very FBI infiltration of, his, of the Trump campaign. Dinesh, uh, magically, Jim Comey already has written an op-ed for The New York Times. <laughs> okay. It comes out. It, it's well, already written. It's published today. I'm just going to share a small part of it. He said, this independent assessment will be useful to thoughtful people and an important contribution to the historical record. Its detailed report should serve to both protect and build the reservoir of trust and credibility necessary for the DOJ and the FBI to remain strong and independent. Wild. The man has learned Zippo, Dinesh. Well, you also see the collusion between the deep state operating behind closed doors and organs like the New York Times, uh, which time these kinds of counterpoints um, to immediately try to diffuse the impact of the IG report. Uh, what I want to know here, uh, Roger mentioned this notion of getting to the bottom of it, uh, the, the tremendous kind of glee and sense of immunity with which these agents at the high level are operating suggests to me that they would not do it without someone giving the order. I mean, there's that question from The Godfather, who gave the order? And, uh, uh, you know, you know, Lord, the old phrase, qui bono, who benefits, is a good way to try to guess who gave the order. Now, Hillary benefits, but Hillary clearly couldn't have given the order. Uh, she was Secretary of State, and then she was out of the government. Obama, on the other hand, uh, well, very much did not want Trump to win. Uh, he knew that Trump would try to erase his legacy. It would be very embarrassing for him to be succeeded by Trump. 
I wonder if Obama is the one who gave the order. Well, Roger, we have some emails to that effect. Final thoughts. We already found out that uh, the president lied when he said he found out about Hillary's you know, private email server when everybody else did. Now we find out he's one of the 13 people she communicated with on the private server with using that private email account. So he lied about that. When you add to the fact that Peter Strzok says in one of his text messages, the president wants to know everything, the question's very clear. What did the president know, and when did he know it? He needs to answer that question. I think he needs to answer it under oath to the Congress. Well, he's going to be going out on the campaign trails. Apparently, he's the only person who can win elections for the Democrats, so he's, he's going to be fanning out this election season. Thank you both. Phenomenal analysis, as always, from both of you.